Hi everyone, my name is Sino and welcome to this review of the Anycubic i3 Mega. First of all, I'm a maker at heart, but me being me, I'm just too lazy to actually get up and do something. I mean, I'm basically a newbie carpenter, we had that at school, kinda had to get some more insights on the practical side of the job that I'm learning, but I just never actually get around to create a project. But when I do do things, like just repairing the smallest thing or creating something, I just love every single aspect about it. Then about three months ago, I think I saw one of Linus's sponsorships and... I mean, don't quote me, that could have also been some other tech YouTubers. And in that, he had a sponsorship about a monoprice 3D printer. And I thought to myself, hey, that's goddamn cheap. I really want to get one of those. But then, uh, well, shipping costs to Austria were just ludicrously high. And the print volume was just so small that I had to look more in-depth into the topic. And that did some research on But I had a pretty set-in-stone idea about what the printer should be capable of generally about the printing volume and also printing and construction quality. So in the first round of who will be Patrick's new 3D printer, there were some contestants that were just too goddamn expensive. So after putting budget and well common sense into the equation, it boiled down to one printer from Monoprice, another one from Anycubic i3, and then the one I picked, the Anycubic i3 Mega, in the end, it was pretty obvious which one to choose. I was pretty skeptical about the Monoprice and the Anycubic i3 because they're pre 3D printing kits. So you have to build most of the printer yourself. And I did some research and actually, well, found a lot of videos from actual 3D printing YouTubers who talk about this topic a lot more than I do. And most of them said that 3D printing kits are not the optimal way to go because quality control and overall construction methods are just a lot better when you get a pre-built one or at least where most of it is pre-built. Furthermore, I had the budget to spend the money. I went for the i3 Mega because of its superior build quality, printing area and menu. I mean, look at it, a touchpad with a decent revolution? Most of the other 3D printers in that price range actually have a control knob looking like the 1980s want their state of the art back. However, you really shouldn't choose your 3D printer based on the interface or your touch panel or, the, you know, the thing that you're playing around with whenever you pre-3D printing. So okay, we get that. I chose the i3 Mega because, in my opinion, it was just superior to the other ones I found in the price range, so... What do we get with it in the box? So you wanna hear something about packaging then? In the box, first of all, you get a lot of plastic, and then also this soft sort of styrofoam, which actually protected it really well from the shipment from China to the Netherlands in the international uh, port, then up to the UK, into London, which, well, is in the UK, then down to Germany and finally into Austria, where it arrived without any damage. So what's in a box now, you ask? There are these two chunk of metal, you know, some on close inspection would call them almost fully pre-assembled 3D printer parts that you just have to screw in with eight screws. So now I just have to plug in some cables and do some minor repairs if something slipped out of its place, like I had to do with my right C-axis. You also get a scraper, a set of tools to repair and assemble the printer, a pair of pliers, some tweezers, a plexiglass filament holder that has to be assembled while you lose your mind removing the protective paper that was placed onto it by Satan himself. A replacement hot end, some extra sensors that the printer uses to determine its home axes before every single print, a pair of beautiful latex gloves for assembly, an SD card and also a corresponding SD card to USB adapter, and then there's this cable from a machine port to USB. I guess you, you know the one side you plug into the printer and then you have a standard USB-A side 
things. And also manual, which is really important. Do read it if you're a 3D printing noob like me. It will help you set up the printer and also determine some settings for slicers. For more fun with boxes and further detail on assembly and actually unboxing the thing, press the eye icon up here. I hope it's up here and if it's not, it's up here. And if I was wrong the first time, I'm just gonna flip the image. Movie magic. Next topic, specs. So, you know, I'm just I'm just gonna fly over them so that you don't get too bored, okay? We're gonna do the flyby. It has a print speed of 20 to 100 millimeters per second, a minimal layer height of 0.05 millimeters, that's half, a, that's a, a 20th of a millimeter, which is amazing, going up all the way to 0.3 millimeters, well, just with that nozzle you actually can go higher with the well, correspondingly thicker nozzle. Speaking of the nozzle, it can go up all the way to 260 degrees and the bed can go up to 110 degrees for that extra bitchy ABS. Well, now let's get to the most important part about this printer personally, the printing volume, which is 210 to 210 to 205 millimeters. So, you know, 210 in both axes and then a height, a Z axis of 205 millimeters, which is a great 3D printing volume. I haven't printed too much yet, even though I have the printer for about three weeks now, and I've never run into any issues with size, so you're probably never gonna print anything bigger, except if you have any special projects. Oh, and yeah, you can print via direct USB direction, then you have to install your the printer firmware on your PC, or just via a standard SD card. You don't have to use the one included. Just Standard USD, uh, USD, yes, USD, SD card form factor. So I'm sure that's everything you need to know. If I missed anything, please visit Anycubic's designated site for the printer. There's a full page full of specs. You can visit it if, yeah, again, I missed something. And if that something's not listed there or you have any other questions about anything, ask me in the comments. Don't hesitate. So after you assembled everything, how do you set up your printer for your first print? First, switch the small PSU switch to the corresponding voltage that comes out of your power outlet. It should be defaulted to 220 volts and actually most of the countries in the world do use 220 to 230 volts. But there are some special cases that use 110 to 120 volts like the USA. And if you want to look that up before you actually switch on your printer, just visit the page, again linked in the description or in the eye. Can I do it? Page? Yeah, I'm pretty sure I can do it, but just visit the link in the description and you find out what voltage comes out of your power outlet. So after you've ensured not to kill your PSU and, well, not killing your ground fault interrupter, you're now free to unleash the beast that you've just bought. So after you turn it on, it beeps for a few seconds, you know, it has a little, little anti-cubit jingle, and no, 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 no. I don't know how to turn it off and no, 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 don't mess with your hex code. Never mess with your 3D printer's hex code. It'll only get worse, but you'll get used to it. After that, you're greeted by the home menu. Now you just have to level your 3D printer. So first of all, home all your axes. Then, real important step, turn off your motors, not to damage them, and then just move the nozzle from every, into every single corner and align the nozzle with the bed. Slide a piece of paper under there, you have to feel a little bit of resistance. It'll get easier the more you do it. The first time can be a little bit, you know, scary. You've just bought that machine that costs a couple hundred bucks and you're, while doing something you've never done before, don't hesitate, you can't really damage it, but do be careful to not scratch a nozzle along the printing surface because that's really the only way that you can actually damage your printer or in that fact your nozzle and bed. So be aware of that, otherwise you can't really mess up. So now that everything's leveled and set up, just jam your SD card into that slot, fill your filament into its Teflon tube right beneath, right up to the printer head and then just press print and you're basically good to go. Now the printer will make noises like the world is going down and it's simultaneously singing the aria of death. Who knew heating up components could sound that disturbing? <laughs> so after about three minutes, the whole spectacle is over and the 3D printer will home all its axes and then starts to print. 
Great, now you'll know if your leveling job was top or a flop. If for the first few millimeters your filament is not sticking to the bed, it doesn't matter. Don't worry about it. You're usually printing with a skirt around the print printing part before so that you're re that you're assuring that it's actually doing everything correctly and the filament is whole sticking to the surface but if after an uncomfortably amount of time that this filament still isn't sticking to the surface and you're just wasting plastic stop the print press and print don't worry about anything home all the axes again and redo everything I, I, I do recommend you waiting before for leveling again because the part should cool down a little bit before you're doing it again. I don't, you don't want to burn your hand while leveling. With this printer's bed you don't have to apply any glue or other rough surfaces like you have to do in other printers because this printer's bed is preheated and it actually sticks extremely well. Shortly after you finish the print you, you hardly gonna get it off of the surface if you're not using the scrape you have to jank it off there just to get it off but once the surface is cooled down it's just it basically pops off you, just, you don't have to do anything it's laying there like it's it has never sticked on this surface before so props to that I love I, I absolutely love the printing bed and if you followed all these steps in the correct order you now should be printing the two owls that came with the SD card because they're the test thingy that you can do and it, they have really good settings. So now that you've printed these owls, you want to get some more out of it, right? So now you install your Cura driver from the included SD card or you can actually download Cura 15.04.6 which is a really, really simple version. You just have to, well, then start it up, follow the menu step by step, do everything like the manual t tells you to do and you're good to go. You can basically print everything. After that you just have to print layer height and printing speed to adjust the print quality. You know, when you're having a small layer height and less printing speed, printing quality will drastically improve and if you just have to print a quick draft, just crank it up all the way to 0.3 millimeters and speed up is about 60 millimeters per second is recommended. For normal printing I recommend 50 to 40, but with higher layer heights you can go up to all, all the way up to 60 and after getting a little bit more experience with the software you can actually upgrade to new Acura versions I I do recommend you do it because you get a lot more features in the newer versions or well settings that you weren't able to adjust before so in conclusion I have to say man I just love 3d printing and basically everything that's not too complicated you throw at the printer it just prints magnificently uh, currently I'm actually printing a statue of Ava 01 from Neon Genesis Evangelion it's by far the most complicated print that I've ever done and it won't be finished until like 14 hours in the future while I'm recording this and it's also been it's already been printing for 11 hours so crazy big um, and here are some examples that I actually printed this is a dire wolf from Thingiverse I've, I'll be leaving links to all of these models in the description well except the owls because you can't just oh I'm gonna do the owls too and then, which by the way is the best print I've done on this printer. The settings are just amazing. I've printed this on a 0.1 millimeter layer height with a white PLA and I think 40 millimeters per second it was really slow. And with a 10% uh, a 15% infill and support material of uh, I chose lines because I prefer the lines of a grid because with grid the support just looks so bad. So I chose lines and with a uh, support infill of like 15 to 10 percent, something really low and it's just printed magnificently. If you just look at the uh, bottom side of it, you can hard, I mean, I mean, lighting here is shit for white things, so you can, I mean, for you, this basically looks like something cast, I'm pretty sure, but, you know, my camera's not the best and my setup's not the best, so. Uh, I also printed this small D8, which turned out okay it had a lot of problems on the downside but that's just due to the first layer being thicker and higher than the ones above it because uh, with a thicker and higher layer 
you actually improve the stickiness to the surface even more. And then we have a small calibration cube. My printer has, um, it was in the point, about 0.1 to 0.2 millimeters wrong. And it, it doesn't really matter, to be honest. If you're printing something that precise, in the end it doesn't matter because all the parts are wrong, but that's f fraction of a percent that it's incorrect. And then here we have my first 3D print ever. You know, the two owls that come with the printer, or, well, preloaded on the printer. And they're just, make, they're amazing. The detail on the feathers and everything, they're just great. And then I've also, I've done a lot more, but I can't just show everything. But I do want to show one more thing. That's something I've printed with a layer height of 0.6 millimeters, and at that height, it actually had a lot of problems with stringing something, uh, well, but there's just small cavities and very complex models. It will be having some problems with stringings, uh, with stringing. Just um, adjust your attraction settings over time. You'll get a feel for what your printer is capable of and what not. And by the way, that statue is almost so three centimeters high, so about 2.8 centimeters. The print quality though, Quality though is really good, very smooth surfaces and everything, a amazing, I'm just, I'm just so amazed. And I mean, in the end, and there's, uh, I wanna show this fox right here. Uh, there we go. Look, um, I'm just bumping my mic, that probably sounds horrible. And you can't really see it because it's black, but it's a really good fox. It's a great model, it's so smooth. So in the end, this is an amazing printer for just 300 bucks. I ordered mine off of Gearbest, I you know, I consulted some other tech YouTubers focusing on 3D printers, they get a lot of stuff from it, so I, and they said Gearbest is really good, I don't know how biased these opinions were, you know, because they get a lot of free stuff from them. I mean, I insured my package, I went for extra delivery, the package arrived totally in time, about three to four days before it was, before its due date, you know, the latest date to arrive. I mean, it, it has to go all around the world, it came right from a warehouse from China, where actually Anycube is situated, and I mean, you can go the safe route and order it from Amazon, but there it's about 150 to 200 bucks more, and I, <laughs> as a broke ass student, I'm not able to pay that much more for the same product, just for, well, more insurance. And I do want to recommend you insure your package every single time, because if you're ordering something from basically the other side of the world, you're never gonna know what's, what's, what'll happen to it. And if something does happen, well, if you lose a product worth 300 bucks, well, you, you fuck it. So always remember, kids, stay safe and use protection. Against fraud. Yes, fraud. Thank you everybody for watching this video. I hope you really enjoyed it. This was actually my first scripted video and I hated it so much at first, remembering all the lines, but after a few minutes you get the gist of it. Uh, no, not the gist of it, but the, yeah, actually, this gist of reading from a piece of paper and then re giving its context out of your mouth into a microphone and a camera at the same time. So I'm basically a multitasking talent. You know, now I have just to get more mics and more cameras and then I'm basically the best multitasker in the world and the last few sentences that I now said didn't make any sense. Which makes it really weird because I actually wrote this part too. <laughs> so thank you everybody for watching this video. Hope you really enjoyed it. Have a nice day. Do all the things. Comment, ask me questions. I'm here to answer every single comment. Uh, because community interaction is just the, mo just the most important thing. And I hope I will be of help. And I'm also glad to help. Well, thank you everyone for watching. I hope you have a really nice day. Bye.